Well, hello and welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. I'm Dr. Tabor Smith, and I am honored to be here with a very good friend of mine, um, a chiropractic marketing genius, Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris Burfield. Um, Chris Burfield is a, a very good friend of mine. If I just had one word to describe him, I would use creator. I mean, this man. Um, can create something out of nothing. He can create ads that uh, bring just truckloads of people into your office. And he's going to share with us tonight how to do the ultimate teacher appreciation day. And this is extremely valid and, and the timing is absolutely perfect for you to be on this webinar right now because back to school is coming just around the corner and we are going to be able to get into these schools, do teacher appreciation programs, help teachers, where some of the people who need the most help, um, and share the message of chiropractic uh, in an amazing way. So Chris, thank you for being here today. We just really appreciate you being on the line. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to you and let you take it from here. Awesome, man. Hey, thanks for that introduction. That was freaking awesome. <laughs> wow, I mean, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm honored that you feel that way about me. Um, well, hey everybody, Absolutely. my name is Chris Burfield, and uh, yeah, Dr. Dr. Tabor's right. Like, uh, this is perfect timing for something like this. We all know that you know school is about to start back up, and who better in your community that like needs your services more than probably anybody than teachers? So, what we want to do is we actually want to create a back to school new patient bonanza for you. So I'm going to show you on this webinar tonight how to do an ultimate teacher appreciation program, how to get into your local schools and perform these programs so that you can start uh, really, you know, just uh, reaching out to not only more people in your community, but, you know, saving more lives. So let's get started. Um, just a little background on myself first, because I know, you know, some of you uh, may have never heard of me before. Again, you know, my name is Chris Burfield, and you're probably like, you know, some of you are, who the heck is Chris Burfield? Well, um, who I am is uh, I'm actually uh, uh, the, uh, the son of a coal miner. Um, I grew up in West Central Pennsylvania, go Steelers. Um, I was born in 1975. And, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, my dad being a coal miner was taught, like, you know, a, a strong work ethic. And, uh, you know, my dad uh, busted his back for years and years to be able to, you know, provide for our family. And that work ethic has definitely uh, rubbed off on me. You know, it's one of my number one goals to, you know, work hard for chiropractors and help them create the practice of their dreams. You know, uh, like Dr. Tabor said, I enjoy being a creator. Um, just as all of you on this call, I mean, everybody is a creator. Um, yeah. I just, uh, I, I spend a lot of my time and focus on tapping into that, that creative energy so that I can uh, produce uh, new patients for, for doctor's practices. So um, I'm actually a college failure, guys. Like, I actually failed out of college. I had two years of it, a little too much partying. But, uh, you know, as luck would have it, my first job uh, coming uh, after failing out of school was I went to work for a chiropractor, and uh, for six dollars an hour, if you'll believe that, uh, back in uh, 1997. So I've been in this profession uh, for quite a long time. Uh, I guess about 15, 16 years, roughly. Um, but uh, yeah, I was blessed enough that my first job was with a chiropractor and a very on-purpose chiropractor, somebody that really taught me the principles of chiropractic and. Uh, you know, instilled in me that chiropractic was about saving people's lives. So, and uh, that has uh, definitely played a major role uh, throughout my entire career. So I got to say, you know, just thank you, Dr. James Strong from Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, if you're on this call or if you, uh, if you uh, see this webinar replay in the future, thank you for teaching me everything you know about chiropractic. Um, I was a chiropractic assistant, guys, from 1997 to 2003. And then in 2003, I actually opened uh, co-opened uh, my own chiropractic office in Allen, Texas from 2003 to 2010 and uh, actually opened that office, guys and girls, for, for less than $12,000. My, my business partner and I, all we had was some credit cards and I had a tax return that I got from the IRS that year for like $3,000. And we took those credit cards and that money and we went and opened an office. And uh, it was make it or break it, you know, that first month or, you know, we were basically going to have to close up shop. Well, 
Uh, I was in that practice for seven years, and I grew that practice through the marketing strategies that I implemented. And uh, one of them is this these teacher appreciation programs that I'm going to show you guys here in a few minutes. Um, but we grew that practice from a, a, a measly $12,000 investment to a practice that was generating over three quarter of a million dollars a year. And in 2010, I sold my half of the practice to my business partner so that I could go and start helping other chiropractors have the same type of success, if not more, that we were having in our practice. So really since 2006 to present, guys, uh, I've been really helping chiropractors market their practice. So I'm a, as Dr. Tabor said, you know, he referred to it as a chiropractic marketing genius. Uh, I wouldn't say that necessarily, but uh, I am pretty good at what I do. Um, and uh, tonight I'm going to show <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, I'm going to show um, show some of you tonight one of the strategies that we actually implemented in our office, and uh, and it is teacher appreciation program. So I want to go over uh, what we're going to learn here tonight. Uh, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn why you need to reach out to teachers in your community in the first place. Uh, you're going to learn why you want to focus on teacher appreciation events. You're also going to learn how to perform a teacher appreciation event in your community, and you're going to learn how to perform a proper stress evaluation when you're actually uh, sitting down and talking with your with your local teachers uh, in your in your local schools. We're also going to learn uh, how to close uh, and what to offer each teacher at the end of their this uh, at the end of the uh, teacher appreciation event. So you're actually going to be talking to teachers individually throughout. Um, uh, over the course of like a three to four hour period when you do these events. And I'm going to teach you exactly what to say to those uh, teachers that you close them and actually get them into your office for a new patient exam. I'm going to teach you how to approach scheduling their new patient exam. That's, uh, you want to be very delicate with that. Uh, you don't want to be salesy or pushy. So I'm going to teach you uh, how to approach your teachers uh, properly so they actually get that exam scheduled. And then I'm going to teach you what to give them uh, in their new patient packet. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to properly confirm their new patient appointment to make sure that you have a very high percentage of those teachers actually showing up for their exam. The doctors that are doing these exams or are doing these events, uh, they're having like a 90% show rate. So also, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that I have a very special gift for you here at the end of this webinar, so you're definitely going to want to stay tuned all the way to the end. Uh, this won't take very long. I'm going to guess maybe 30 minutes max, um, but I definitely have a gift for each and every one of you that, uh, that make it to the end of this webinar tonight. So here's the big question, why? Why do teacher appreciation events? Why? why target teachers in your community? Well, for three simple reasons. Teachers are overworked, teachers are underpaid, and teachers are overstressed. And, and, and I say, you know, those three things because this, these three things combined, I mean, it just it creates stress in general, and it ends up that these teachers end up having a lot of health problems. You know, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They're barely able to pay their bills sort of thing. That's stressing them out. They're overworked, they're overstressed, and uh, you know this is a perfect opportunity for you to step in and really be like a hero to them. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So why teacher appreciation events? Well, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Sir Edmund Hillary, but uh, Sir Edmund Hillary was born on June 18, 1886, and he died on June 8th or 9th, 1924, when he was trying to summit Mount Everest. Um, he, was, uh, he was an English mountaineer who took part in the first three British expeditions to Mount Everest in the early 1920s. And, uh, crap, uh, you know, it's not Sir Edmund, it's fuck. Okay, but is there any way we can edit that part? Shit. Yeah, absolutely. That's all right, what happened? Um, it's not Sir Edmund Hillary, it's George Mallory. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just uh, change that and then like go back like you're starting that slide again and I'll edit that out and cut it. Okay. That's weird. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Glad we weren't live on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was crazy. 
Yeah, sorry, man. Okay, uh, almost there. Okay, so, um, long slide. Okay, so why teacher appreciation events? Why would you want to do them in the first place? Well, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Oh, shit. Hold on, Tabor. <laughs> I, <didn't, laughs> I must have, like, really backed up far. That's a kid. Okay. So why teacher appreciation events? Why would you want to do a teacher appreciation event in the first place? Well, here's a little story that you guys may or may not be familiar with. Uh, it, uh, most people don't know this guy, but if you're into mountain climbing or rock climbing, that you would know him, uh, George Mallory. Now, George Herbert Lee Mallory was born on June 8, 1886, and he died on June 8, 1924. It was like the 8th or 9th, or actually kind of uncertain of his death because he actually died on Mount Everest. Um, he was an English mountaineer, mountaineer who took part in the first three British expeditions to Mount Everest in the early 1920s. Mallory is famously quoted as having replied to a question, and the question that was asked to him was this, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? And he simply replied with, because it's there. So. With that being said, why do you want to do teacher appreciation programs? Well, the answer is really simple, because they need you, because the teachers in your community need you. Now, if you're on this webinar tonight just because you want to make a boatload of money, and that is the only reason for being here, then I'm going to kindly ask you to leave right now. I'm here tonight to help you help more people in your community because the people in your community are sick and dying. So if you're here just to make money, then this webinar is definitely not for you because I'm here to help you save more lives. You see, the teachers in your local schools are in desperate need of your help. These people are the ones who are teaching our children, and if they're dealing with unwanted health problems, stress, sickness, and pain or disease, it is impossible for them to deliver a quality education to our kids. It is physically and mentally impossible. So not only do our teachers need you, but our kids need you. The kids in your community need you to be able to help these teachers live a higher quality of life. You know, as BJ once said, we never know how far-reaching something we may say, think, or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. Teachers are teaching millions of children across this nation, so we need to make sure that our teachers are in good health. These teacher appreciation programs are extremely lucrative, and you will make a lot of money from them, but I don't want you guys to be on this, on this webinar tonight just for the sole purpose that you want to make money. Now, between 2010 and 2011, our office generated over $270,000 from teacher appreciation events, just like the one I'm going to show you tonight. In 2010, we did $110,000. In 2011, now, I'd actually already sold my half of the practice, but they kept doing teacher appreciation events because they worked so well in 2010. In 2011, uh, a friend of mine was actually working uh, as a, an associate doctor in our practice. Uh, he was hired on just as I had sold my half of the practice, and he told me that they generated 160000 that year. So there's definitely um, definitely some, some money to be made in the, with these programs and a lot of people to help. Now, here's just a few uh, docs that have actually done this program, and then we'll get right into the meat and potatoes of it. But I just want you to you know, see that th this thing actually, I mean, it works really, really well if you implement it properly. Um, this is jo uh, Dr. Justin Ackers, and he says that uh, this thing rocks. I think this will double my practice in 90 days. He said, I collected over 300000 from teacher appreciation alone 
This does not include the money I collected from their families or their friends that were, re that were referred in after the fact. I think I did 12 or 13 that were only half, uh, only half days. So, you know, he only did maybe like four hours, three to four hours a day. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, three to four hours per event. He says, this thing rocks. I think this will double my practice in 90 days. And then uh, Dr. Tim Sala from Massachusetts, he says, Chris, I wanted to update you on my status with the Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program. I've done the program at the local high school and middle school on two consecutive Thursdays. I was planning on doing the grade school and elementary school as well, but I'm taking the next two weeks off because my schedule is already so full from the first two schools. This couldn't be simpler, and the teachers and staff love it. Thanks again, Chris. And then we have uh, Dr. Jamie Gonzalez. He says, well, here's what I did. I scheduled the Teacher Appreciation Day for today, Monday, from 11 to 1, eight 15-minute blocks, two or no shows. I screened six, scheduled six new patient appointments. The secretary didn't get on the schedule, but will come in this week from her uh, for her own screening, and a former patient will reactivate. So I screened six, got seven new appointments, and one reactivation. He spent a uh, purchased two sub rings from Subway for seventy dollars, some cookies for fifteen dollars at Walmart, and he says I bought some uh, or from Walmart. He bought some chips and a bottle and some bottles of water for fifteen dollars. So it cost him a hundred dollars for the whole event, but he scheduled seven new patients and one reactivation. And then finally, uh, Dr. Jeremy Evans from Texas says, we made over $20,000 doing just a few teacher appreciation programs. It's the easiest thing we've ever done. So this is a really simple way for you to tap into uh, really a, a never-ending stream of, of new patients in your, in your community. So here's some of the materials that you guys are going to need for your program when you perform these events. You're going to need food and you're going to need a massage chair. Now, if you don't have a massage chair, you can use just a regular fold-up chair. That, that'll work well, too. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first several events we did, we just had a fold-up chair. Eventually, we ended up buying a massage chair. Because one of the things that we do at these events is we actually go in and we perform a trigger point massage. Now, I know there's some docs on the, on the webinar that might be like, oh, well, why would you do a trigger point massage? Why not like a posture screening or something like that? Um, well, here's the deal, guys. This is a teacher appreciation event. You're going into these schools to show these teachers your appreciation for them. So you're actually giving something of yourself. You're giving back to the community. You're giving back to the schools and these teachers for the hard work that they do. You go in and do a posture screening. Um, you know, there's, you know, granted, you know, if someone has bad posture, it leads to poor health, and you can schedule them an appointment and stuff like that. But we want to make these teachers feel special. You know, we want to do something that's going to make them feel good for the day. And it's been my experience that I've never really met anybody that, like, would turn down a massage. So what we did is we went into our local schools and we did these, uh, we did just a trigger point massage. It only took a few minutes. Um, it only took maybe two, even three minutes to do this massage, but it's something that they'll remember for a lifetime. And, uh, but it gave us an opportunity as well to talk to them about their health problems and get them scheduled for an exam to where we could really provide uh, the type of services that we needed to actually get these people well, which is obviously the chiropractic adjustment. So, but you're going to need a, a massage chair or just a fold-up chair. Um, you're going to need stress surveys, clipboards, and pens. You're going to need an appointment book, business cards, and directions uh, that are written out on a piece of paper with a map to your office. Um, you're also going to need intake forms and patient education handouts. And then you're going to need information on what to expect on their first visit. Some, uh, now, that's step one. Step two is that when you do these events, you're going to arrive 30 to 45 minutes early. And what this does, does is this allows you enough time to get the schedule for the day from the front office and set up your area. Now, I know some of you are thinking, like, what do, you, what do you mean, you know, the schedule from the front office? Well, one of the things that we teach in this program uh, is we teach you exactly how to make the initial phone calls to your local schools, how to uh, schedule an appointment with the, uh, with the principal or the principal's assistant, and go in there and actually present this program. And nine times out of ten, the schools are absolutely ecstatic about it, and they can't wait for you to get in there and provide one and do one of these events for their teachers. Um, 
this uh, on this particular webinar, I'm going to be going over everything that you're going to be doing at the event. But um, I do have a program where you uh, where I'll teach you exactly what to say, how to say it, and what's going to happen is your your local school, the principal or the uh, the principal's assistant, whoever is in charge there, um, will actually uh, uh, have a schedule where t where teachers will come down to the front office and actually schedule out appointments. So that when you show up, you already have an appointment schedule of all the teachers that you're going to see for that day. So, and we actually schedule that like in 10 to 15 minute blocks. So, step three is you're going to do some meet and greet with the uh, with these teachers. Always, always, always greet each teacher with a smile and a firm handshake, and make good eye contact with the teacher. Uh, don't be all wishy washy when they walk up to you. Don't you know? Don't sit in the chair. And just kind of like wave at them, say hi. Actually, stand up, go over to them, shake their hand, make good eye contact, smile. Uh, you know, don't look at the floor, stare at the floor as you're saying hello. Again, you know, you want to make good, good kind eye contact because confidence is a key factor. Don't, don't ever, ever let them see you sweat. You know, there's no need to be nervous over these events, or again, you know, need, no need for you to be wishy washy. You know, just be laid back, be cool, and be professional. So part of step three is also um, what you want to do is you want to ask them to fill out a stress survey. So after you greeted them, um, you want to hand them a stress survey and ask them to fill it out before you perform the trigger point massage. And then what you're going to do is you're then going to review the stress survey with them before you begin the massage as well. And here's what you're going to ask them. You're going to ask them these questions. You're going to ask them, how long have you been suffering with this problem? So in other words, if they put on the stress survey that they're having headaches, you're going to ask them, well, how long have you been having migraines? Or how long have you been having headaches? How often are they occurring? And then you're going to ask them, what does it feel like? And you want them to tell them, you know, tell you what it feels like. It's, it's pounding, throbbing, um, you know, my head feels like it's splitting open sort of thing. You want them to really, you know, express to you exactly what it feels like when they're having this problem. And then another good question to ask is, you know, how does it how does that make you feel? Like obviously, you know, you've just described to me what the pain feels like, but how do you feel as a person when that's when that's going on? Don't tell you, oh I'm miserable or oh my gosh, like, you know, I feel like the the world is coming to an end sort of thing. So you want them to, you know, really explain to you how that makes them feel. You're going to ask them, well, what are you currently doing about it? And they'll let you know, you know, I'm taking injections or I'm taking prescription medication or I take, you know, extra strength uh, Tylenol or ibuprofen or whatever it is they're taking. Now, one of the key things here is that you don't want to try and schedule an appointment with them at this point. You're just, you're just you know, uh, building a relationship with them, asking them these questions, letting them know that you care about them and what's going on with their health. I don't want to ask questions and then say, well, would you like to come in to my office for an appointment? So you're just going to leave it be, just let them talk it out, and then uh, after you uh, uh, have uh, you know, had your conversation with them and you guys have discussed their health problem, you're just going to simply say to them, hmm, okay, well, I'm really curious to see what we find here today. And that's it. So, and then you're going to ask them to have a seat on the chair, and you're going to start performing your trigger point. So, and that's step four is you're going to perform the trigger point. So make sure you apply enough pressure to make them actually feel the tender spots around their neck and their shoulders and, and their upper back. So you really, and if, and if they have a low back problem, then you want to focus on the low back area. Again, you want to apply enough pressure to actually feel that tenderness. And... Uh, you want to remember, just remember that this is not a quote-unquote massage. It's not like a Swedish massage. This is a trigger point massage. And as you guys know, there's a big difference between the two. You know, the point of doing this is to uh, make them aware of the problems that they're having uh, with their spine and, with their, and, uh, and relate that back to the problem that they're, the health problems that they're currently suffering with. So when you find those sore spots, like I said, you want to make them aware of it. And you want to just ask them point blank, Mary, do you feel that? 
is that sore or tender? And she's going to say, yeah, you know, and they're going to squirm a little bit and all that, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of like maybe, you know, pull their shoulders back, like, oh, yeah, that is, that's real tender, that's sore. And then when they tell you that, what you're going to say to them, uh, wh- whenever they say, yes, that is sore, that is tender, you're going to say, really? And then you're just going to pause, and you're going to, like, wait for them to respond. So, Mary, do you feel that? Is that tender or sore? And she's going to say, yeah, it's really tender. And then you're just going to say, Really? And then she's going to be like, yeah. And then you're just going to say, well, that's not normal. That's not normal at all. You shouldn't feel anything but just the little bit of pressure that I'm putting. You shouldn't feel any tender, tenderness or soreness. And then she's going to say, really? <laughs> and then you're going to say, yes. Um, and then you're going to say, Mary, look, something's causing your husband. So you're going to finish up your trigger point, and then you're going to, as you finish up with them, you're going to sit down next to them. You're going to make eye contact with them. You don't want to talk. You don't want to talk to the back of their head. You want to, like, have them sit up, and you want to make good eye contact with them. And you're going to say, Mary, look, something is causing your headaches, and I think I may have found what it is. So you don't, you don't want to tell them, Mary, I found, I found out what's causing your headaches. You've got a subluxation, blah, 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 blah. You don't want to do that. So, because you haven't performed an exam, so there's really nothing that's going to validate that you found the cause to their headaches, you know, with, that they've been suffering from for the last, you know, probably 10, 15, 20 years or, or, or you know, the last eight months or whatever it is. Um, you want to make sure that you perform your evaluation first because it gives your, your diagnosis way more credibility. So, you don't want to tell them, hey, Mary, I found your problem. So, you're just going to say, Mary, look, something's causing your headaches. And I think I may have found exactly what it is, but I would really need to do a further evaluation to know for sure. And what you're going to say to her after that is you're going to make your offer. You're going to say, here's the deal. We're working with your school, and because of that, we're able to offer you a free exam in our office. Now, you can charge for your exam. I offered a free exam, and not only that, guys and girls, but I actually offered the first adjustment at no cost either. And I know that some people on the call may not agree with that. And if that's the case, you know what? No problem. Charge for your exam. Charge for your adjustment. It's not going to make a difference. It's whatever whatever you feel most comfortable with. I wanted to give a free exam. And if, if we were able to help them, I wanted to provide their first adjustment. And I refer to it as a treatment just because I wanted to talk to them in terms of their language because they may have no idea what an adjustment is. So I refer to it as a treatment. But the reason I offered that is because it's a teacher appreciation event. I wanted to do something that gave back to the community, something that gave back to these teachers that are overworked, underpaid, and overstressed. So I didn't want to come in and do all this and then offer, you know, say, hey, you can come into my office for just $250. It's normally $450. So I didn't want to do that because then it's like, then it became about me, uh, you know, being in there and basically trying to schedule them an appointment. So, you know, in their mind, they may be thinking, wow, you know, um, going in there and I'm going to be paying like $99 or $250 for this exam. I thought like this, I thought I was being celebrated today. Um, so, but anyway, that's why I did it. Uh, but here's, here's what I said. Here's the deal. We're working with your school and because of that, we're able to offer you a Excuse me. Oh, my gosh, I swallowed down the wrong pipe. <laughs> uh, here's the deal. We're working with your school, and because of that, we're able to offer you a free exam in our office. Everything has been taken care of in advance, so it won't cost you a dime to have your problem evaluated. And then I followed up by saying, as a matter of fact, if I do find out what's causing your headaches, your first treatment is also covered at no charge to you. It's just our way of giving back and showing you how much we actually appreciate you as a teacher. And then I would say we wanted to do something special for you. And that's, those are key words right there, guys and girls. We wanted to do something special for you. Everybody wants to feel special. So we wanted to do something special for you. We wanted to do something nice for you. Is there any reason why you wouldn't take advantage of this? And let me tell you something. Nine out of ten people that you talk to, teachers, 
are going to say, no, there's no reason why I wouldn't take advantage of it. I would like to schedule an appointment in your office. You just told them that you wanted to do something special for them. You wanted to do something nice for them. Why would they turn that down? So, you know, if, if they turn it down, they kind of sound like, excuse my language, but they kind of sound like a dickhead. You know, hey, man, I wanted to do something really nice for you. Ah, no, nah, I, don't, I don't want that. You know what I mean? So um, that's why I phrased it like that. We wanted to do something special for you. We wanted to do something nice for you. Is there any reason why you wouldn't take advantage of this? And they're, they're going to want to schedule the appointment, and as soon as they say, yes, I'd like to schedule an appointment, you're going to say, excellent, what time works best for you? Mornings or afternoons? One of the biggest mistakes I see doctors do and CAs do when they're doing these, uh, whether it's this or a spinal screening or some, or even just the, uh, you know, when uh, they're scheduling out appointments with their patients um, for, the, you know, their, their regular uh, adjustment, um, is that they're all over the place. Like, they're, instead of just, like, saying, uh, hey, would you like mornings or afternoons and starting to narrow the schedule down, they say, so what day works best for you? Okay, well, uh, let's see. How about Thursday? Okay, what time on Thursday? How about 8 o'clock? Well, we're act not actually open at 8 o'clock. Um, well, then the patient says, well, how about, uh, how about like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock? Well, we're actually at lunch at that time. Okay, and then it's like, okay, well, how? And then the CA says, well, what about Thursday afternoon at 3? And then the patient says, well, I can't. I have to work that day. How about Friday afternoon? Oh, well, we're not here Friday afternoon. We're only here Friday mornings. So don't do that. Like what you want to do is you want to find out mornings or afternoons. What time to rest best for you, mornings or afternoons? So let's say they, they, they say mornings. Well, whatever days that you're there in the mornings, you've got it narrowed down to those days. So let's say Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, you're there in the morning. So you could then say, okay, well, what day works best for you? Monday or Tuesday, Let, you know, and if it's like if they say uh, mornings and you're open Monday and Wednesday mornings, you say Monday or Wednesday. So you give them a choice between the two days. And then they'll tell you, uh, you know, how about Monday? And then you'll say, okay, I have a 4 o'clock, and, you know, obviously, you know, the slides here are for the afternoon, but uh, let's say it was in the morning. I have a, I have a 7 a.m. and I have a 9 a.m. Or if they wanted an afternoon appointment, I have a 4 o'clock and a 5 o'clock. Which one works best for you? And then you, and then you just get that patient, that teacher scheduled. And then what you're going to do is you're going to provide them with an intake form and tell them to have it filled out before they come in. And then you're going to give them a sheet of paper with directions and a map to your office. And that should all be in the new patient packet that you give them. And uh, you're going to give them a business card with your phone number and make sure it has your website address on it, and then you're going to give them some educational materials and what to expect on their first visit. And then what you're going to finally do, the last step, step eight, is you're going to confirm their appointment. And here's the deal. I prefer it if the doctor actually confirms the appointment the day before. Now, you can have your CA do it. That's fine. But here's what I found is that when the doctor makes the phone call, and it's just really like if you've got – you know, five patients, five new patients that are supposed to come in, calls will take you like less than like six, six, seven minutes to do. Um, the doctor makes the phone call because we found that, it's, that it significantly increases the show rate if the DC actually confirms the appointment versus the CA. So at this point, I know most of you are saying, wow, you know, this sounds like a really incredible program. I want to get started right away. How do I contact my local schools and get this ball rolling? Well, I alluded to that earlier in the program. I actually have a, a teacher appreciation program where I have done everything for you. Um, uh, the entire marketing program is laid out for you step by step. And here's what's actually inside the kit. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with everything that's in it. Um, you're going to get the ABCs and XYZs of how to present this program to your local school district and get them to say yes. And how soon can you get in here and start doing this? And with school starting up here in just the next few weeks, this is a perfect opportunity for you to start contacting your local schools and getting, in, and getting these events scheduled. We provide all the forms and all the scripts on what to say to make this an absolute no-brainer for your school district. Also, you're going to get immediate access to two online training videos that show you step-by-step -step 
everything you need to do to get into your local schools. You're going to get immediate access to my personal PRCA's audio. This is a short, concise interview that I did with her. Uh, her name is Alicia that contains an interview. Uh, she, was, uh, with my, uh, my, she was my marketing director um, slash PRCA. And uh, she was a staff member that I had setting up and performing all of these programs in our community. I actually only went out to the first few and then I had her trained and had her going out and performing all of these events um, for us. So we could actually be in the office serving patients, saving lives, and she was out in the community saving lives by doing these events. And in that interview, she explains how easy it is for you to have your staff members take the reins and do these programs for you. All the necessary documents that you need to implement this new patient marketing strategy uh, as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, the school, uh, uh, school year starts. So I normally charge $597 for this program, but because uh, Dr. Tabor asked me to be on this webinar, um, I decided that I wanted to give back to you guys and actually knock a couple hundred dollars off it. So you can actually get this program for just $397 uh, if you purchase it within the next 24 hours. So that's uh, number one. Number two, is that uh, I told you at the beginning that I, have, uh, uh, that I have a gift for you. And here's what the gift is. If you invest in the Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program within, within the next 24 hours, um, I'm going to give you also, as a free bonus, the Ultimate ND, MD Referral Formula. Now, how would you guys like to become the only DC in town that the, MD, that the MDs know, like, and trust and actually start sending you patients for on a, on a regular basis uh, referrals uh, as a, a referrals from your local medical doctors I know um, I haven't met a chiropractor yet that wouldn't love to get their hands on some medical doctor patients and actually you know help get the, get them out of that system and get them actually well so they don't have to be pumping pumping them full of drugs all the time um, but uh, this program uh, it's a step-by-step -step video tutorial the video literally holds your hand and walks you through each step of the process. You'll be absolutely blown away by how easy we've made it for you to start getting uh, referrals from your local MDs. Uh, there's an audio CD. Um, it's actually an MP3, but this is all online now. Um, this uh, is an audio with uh, me and my good friend, Dr. Uh, Dr. Carney, and I'll teach you how to effectively communicate to the six different personality types that you may encounter uh, with, with your local MDs. You're also going to get another MP3 that teaches you uh, how to win over the notorious gatekeeper. One of the biggest obstacles I hear chiropractors talking about is the gatekeeper. Where they try to contact their local MDs and uh, there's the, uh, the notorious window witch that uh, really puts the stops on it. I'm going to show you how to actually overcome that. And uh, if you've ever encountered uh, one of these people by you know, contacting your local doctors, I'm going to show you how to get her on your side and uh, and basically uh, break the lock to, uh, to the MD's door. So um, I'm also going to give you a CD. Uh, it's actually um, all the documents. I have this as a CD-ROM because it used to be in DVD and CD format, but I recently put it all online so you guys will actually get instant access to it. Um, but you're going to get all the documents uh, that you're going to need to implement this program as well. You're going to get the initial forms and letters that you'll need to get started uh, by making contact with your local MDs. And you're going to get 18 different relationship building letters that you can send out to, uh, to the MDs in your community to get them to start sending you more and more referrals. One of the cool things about this program, guys, is that uh, the, this program, you'll actually have the MDs calling your office to have you come into their office and speak with them. So that's one of the cool things about it. The way we've designed this program is that the MDs will actually be reaching out to you. You're just going to be making some initial contact with them. You're not even going to actually physically speak to them, but they're going to end up calling your office. So this program is normally $397, but you're going to get it as a gift tonight absolutely free when you invest in the Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program. Now, again, this program is normally $597. You can get it for $397, and I actually have payment options available on the website, you can actually go to TUTAP, that's T-U-T-A-P, members, M-E-M-B-E-R-S, dot com. So it's TUTAPmembers.com, and that stands for the Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program. 
But it's uh, twotapmembers.com, and you can get this program and start implementing it immediately and uh, getting into your local schools and start uh, having just the, have the floodgates open with new patients throughout the entire school year. So again, like I said in the beginning, you'll have a never-ending stream of new patients. We actually had 16, uh, we had 16 schools in our, in, our, in our town of Allen, Texas alone. There was a high school, a junior high school, a middle school, and a ton of elementary schools. So we actually had 16 different schools that we could go into just in Allen, Texas that wasn't including the surrounding communities of Plano and McKinney and Frisco. Um, so, I mean, this was a program that we had ongoing, which is why the first year we did it, we made $110,000. The second year uh, they did it, they made uh, 160, and I didn't get the stats for 2012. So, but... Uh, Anyway, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I hope you uh, enjoyed the information. And Dr. Tabor, thanks for having me on the call, man, uh, on the webinar. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's that's awesome, Chris. Thank you for sharing all that. And and I just wanted to say too, you know, I I can't always say this when we have you know speakers on these webinars, but with with uh, Chris, I've actually been using his Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program for the last couple years in my office. And it works amazing, guys. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Um, you know, he teaches you how to set these programs up in the schools, and it gets you in the door, and you start doing these. And I'll tell you what, this year, because we've been doing, we've done a couple of these events every year for the last two years, and this year I actually had teachers in, who were, you know, regular wellness patients in my office. They were, they were coming to me asking me to come to their schools. And uh, so I, I don't even have to put these on anymore. I don't even have to go and try to meet with the principals and set up all these stuff. It's like the teachers in my office, because we they, they actually came to our office because of these teacher appreciation days, they come back asking us to come back, telling them, we'll set it up. Just, just you know, just come and do this again. My, my uh, friends need you. And, and Chris is right. Teachers need us more than, you know, almost any profession out there. I mean, they've got their hands on our on our young people, on our kids, and so um, we need to be making sure that their nervous system is working properly. And, and Chris, you know what else I appreciate is that you just you bring the heat, you give everything in your webinar, and really teach us some meat and potatoes that we can actually use. You know, whether you purchase this program or not, you learned and just a ton from this webinar. And I really appreciate you being uh, transparent and open with everything, and sharing that with us. But uh, everybody who's on this call, I highly, highly recommend. You go to twotapmembers.com, that's T-U-T-A-P uh, members.com, and get this Ultimate Teacher Appreciation Program because it's just a ridiculous investment. I mean, $397 is absolutely nothing for what you're going to make on the very first Teacher Appreciation Day that you do. So guys, uh, go there, and uh, thanks again, Chris, for being on the call, and we will talk to you again soon, and everybody have a great night. Thanks. All right, brother.